Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for calling us together. We thank you for the love, the grace that has drawn us together. And we're looking up to you that tonight you will speak your word to our hearts in Jesus' name. Father, we pray you will convince us through your word, by your spirit, that you do care for every one of us today. And that whatever we may be going through, we can learn to trust in the name, in the strength, in the power, and the grace of the Lord. See us through, O Lord. And Lord, we pray that your spirit will apply these words to every one of our hearts, to encourage us and strengthen us for the battle of the hour and of the day. Thank you for the answer. In Jesus' name, we pray. Tonight we're studying from Psalm 56. Just 13 verses of scripture, verse 1 to verse 13. In the Psalms in particular, when you look at the title of the Psalm, it tells you to know the background from which the writer or the singer is writing or singing. And as we look at this psalm, looking at the title, it reveals that it is a psalm of David. But then we know that David wrote a number of the psalms. The circumstances in which he wrote this psalm are also revealed. It was at a time when he got into trouble unexpectedly. You know the story of David's life. He had been running away from Saul. Because Saul was seeking to kill him. This time, as he ran away from Saul, he ran into the net of another king. Running away from King Saul, he ran into King Achish. And he discovered that he was getting from one trouble to get into another trouble. Suddenly, fear gripped him. Anything that brings fear, we must be very careful about. Because when fear comes... We are confused. We will not know what decision to take. We will not know in what direction to go. We will not know what to do. But sudden fear came upon him. Not only this, because of running about from Saul, he had had some kind of settled fear that had accumulated over a period of time. Two kinds of fear now in David. Number one, settled fear that had accumulated because of the trouble he had been going through. Number two, sudden fear because of the unexpected enmity and hatred and plot against his life, even in this enemy territory. And whenever fears come like that, if we're not careful, we will forget the promise of God, the grace and the goodness of God. And so this time he took loss into his hand and he pretended as if he was mad, as if he lost his senses, so that he could get out of the net. But the Lord saw him through, knowing that what he did, he did as a sort of astonishment or surprise in which he found himself. You see, many times when we get into trouble, and we do what may be a little bit imperfect, or what may be a little bit irregular, out of the ordinary, the Lord rescues us first, and later he may come into controversy with us to try to correct the action we put forth. Let's look at the background of this psalm in First Samuel chapter 21. First Samuel chapter 21, from verse 10. And David arose and fled that day for fear of Saul, and went to Achish, the king of Gath. I want you to remember that David had the anointing of God upon his life. He had a call of God on him. The Lord said concerning David, I have found a man after my own heart. And because David had been chosen to replace Saul, the king of Israel, Saul knew about it, that David will reign as king. And he planned so that he will get rid of him. He didn't want the plan of God. The purpose of God, the promise of God to be fulfilled in his life. For this, he became David's enemy. Many times, the devil, knowing what God has intended and planned for our lives, to promote us, to give us progress, and to give us a pro uh, the 
things that we need in life so that we will be the kind of person we ought to be so that we'll be able to win many people to the Lord the devil and his messengers or emissaries or cohorts may be against us and after our lives but one thing is very sure the purpose of God will never be defeated even though Saul was after David and even though he got into this sudden predicament even now we know that the plan of God and the purpose of God was still fulfilled on David. He was running from one king and he ran into another king. He himself being a king in the making. In verse 11, And the servant of Achish said unto him, Is not this David the king of the land? Did they not sing one to another of him in dances, saying, Saul has slain his thousands, and David is ten thousands. You know that David was not reigning as yet. It was still a long way to the throne. But then even the enemies, they began to know that he was destined to the throne. And he said, is not this David the king? They saw the mark of the anointing upon him. They saw that his direction or his path in life was aiming for the throne. They knew that Saul was not dead yet. The new Saul was still the king of Israel, but they were, they were agreeing with what the Lord had already stipulated or planned for the life of David, that he will be king. And they gave voice to their testimony. They gave voice to their confession. They said, is not this David the king? And then they said, because they heard in the dances that David killed his tens of thousands, but Saul slew only thousands. Which means David will be a greater king, a higher king, a more exalted king than Saul. They knew it. Saul knew it. Because of that, they were after his life. Understand? If the devil didn't see anything in future for you, he will not be after you. If the enemies don't know that something great is awaiting you, they will not be after you. People whose lives don't matter, they do not have too much trouble. But you see David, because his life mattered, it mattered in Israel. And if David reigned in Israel, he told the enemy something, because he was going to overcome the enemies on behalf of Israel. Because of that, they were after him. He saw trouble everywhere. In the land of Israel, trouble. Outside the land of Israel, trouble. And then in verse 12, David laid up these words in his heart and was so afraid of Achish the king of God, unlike David. David will normally store up the word of God in his own heart. David will normally keep the promises of God in his own heart. David will normally remind himself that the word of God will never fail, that God is not a man that is your life. Neither the son of man that is your repent, as he said, and shall he not do it? As he spoken, and shall he not bring it to pass? Behold, I have received commandment to bless, and I cannot reverse it. David will normally have remembered that, but he did not. David should have remembered that thy word have I hid in my heart, that I might not sin against thee. Or like David, he did not remember that this book of the law shall not depart out of thy mouth, but thou shalt meditate therein day and night, that you may observe to do according what is written therein. So then shall you be prosperous, and you'll make your way of good success. He forgot. He laid the words of the enemy in his heart. He did not remember what was written concerning him. He did not remember the anointing oil upon him. He did not remember the prophecy of Samuel over him. And you know, whenever we get into trouble, if we forget the word of God, we remember the words of men, the threatenings of men. We remember the plans or the plots of men, the conspiracy of evil people. And you see, whenever we remember the words of men, we become afraid. And if you allow those things to have effect upon your heart, to grip your heart a long time, you will discover that you will settle in fear. And then in verse 13, and he changed his behavior before them, and he faint or pretended himself mad in their hands, and he scrabbled on the doors of the gate, and let his spittle fall down upon his beard. Here David, not knowing what he will do, 
momentarily a cloud came between him and almighty god he couldn't see the lord anymore seated upon the throne he couldn't see the ark of the covenant upon of the lord anymore neither could he see the mercy seat he couldn't tell anymore the guidance and the protection and the preservation of the lord for him he felt the lord was far away he felt all of a sudden that these unbelieving people might kill him and destroy him but that is not possible because david had been raised up to serve his generation and until he serves his generation his life cannot be cut short and you should remember the same thing in your life too whatever the trouble whatever the conspiracy whatever the plot of unbelievers against your life they are just billows that are blowing that are beating upon your sheep they are just the wind that are blowing it is just the harassment of the devil by the grace of god you will get to the other side because the boat cannot sink in the middle of the sea if god has a plan a project for you on the other side of the sea you know god still had about 40 years waiting for david to reign on the throne of israel and those 40 years they will be fulfilled and he thought his life was going he thought he will get rid of him he thought he will die at this time and he took close into, the, into his own hands and he walked in human cleverness and carnality he leaned upon his own understanding and he became like a fool he acted like a mad man but something about god is here you know even though god had a controversy with him that he did not trust him momentarily he allowed the fear of man to grip him at this time but you see god will never condemn you before your enemy he's a good father he's a good lord even if he has a question to ask you he will not ask you before your enemy even if he has a controversy against you for what you are doing and for what you have done that controversy he will not bring it up before the enemy he will say it privately this time he knew that david needed help he knew that he was playing the fool he knew that he was doing something he shouldn't have done but god is a loving father and he's a loving god the controversy will be held privately so god delivered him how did god deliver him verse 14 then said akish unto his servants lo you see the man is mad wherefore then have you brought him to me have i need of madmen that ye have brought this fellow to play the madman in my presence shall this fellow come into my house chapter 22 verse 1 david therefore departed thence and escaped to the cave adulam and when his brethren and all his father's house heard it they went down hither to him the lord delivered him the lord will deliver you he will never condemn his beloved before his enemy the lord will never condemn you before the enemy he will never pick up the controversy because of the foolishness because of the weakness because of the carnal cleverness because of the craftiness he will never pick up the rebuke the correction the controversy in the presence of the enemy our god is a good god and when david settled down he looked at the goodness of god he looked at the thing that the lord has done and then he wrote the psalm that we're studying today psalm 56 the psalm is divided into three parts part one the cross of the godly you know brothers and sisters if we're godly if we're children of god there is a cross to bear there are enemies that may come against our lives but please understand the greater the problem the greater the promise in front of you the greater the cross the greater the crown will be and because this david was a man appointed of god for the throne to reign and to become a captain over the land of israel he seemed to have got trouble but thank god he overcame all his trouble that is the testimony of every child of god at the end of the day you will find you have overcome all the troubles that come across your way now the cross of the godly number two the confidence in god even though he had his cross to bear even though he had his problems to go through he had confidence in god and that made him to cry to god part three crying unto god psalm 56 the cross of the godly verses one and two be merciful unto me O god for man will swallow me up he fighting daily oppresses me 
my enemies will daily swallow me up. For there be many that fight against me, O thou most high. Verse 5. Every day they rest my words. All their thoughts are against me for evil. Verse 6. They gather themselves together. They hide themselves. They mark my steps when they wait for my soul. Here David began to reveal the depth of the problem. The way he sensed it. The way he saw it before the Lord. He knew that as he ran from one kind of trouble, he ran into the midst of danger. He was almost in the jaws of death. He realized and he told God that there were many people that fought against his life. They fought against his progress. They fought against the plan of God in his life to make him reign over the house of Israel. He described the, strength, the danger surrounding him so vividly. He said the enemies fought him daily. The enemies oppressed him frequently. The enemies tried to swallow him up. Think about those three things. Fighting, oppression, swallowing up. You see, whenever you see something like that in your life, you think God has forgotten you. You think that the plans and purposes of God will never be fulfilled again. But remember, it happened to David. And yet, every word, every promise, every intention of God was fulfilled in his life. The Lord is still in the business of delivering his people today. He told God, he said, they will swallow me up because they are fighting against me and oppressing me every day. Then he said, they twisted his word because of their evil thoughts against him. They plotted against him. They had conspiracy against him. They gathered together against his life. And yet, through it all, he learned to trust in the Lord. In all our trouble, in all our difficulties, we should learn to trust in the Lord and learn to pray unto the Lord. In Psalm 86, Psalm 86, verse 14. O God, the proud are risen against me, and the assemblies of violent men have sought after my soul, and have not searched thee before them. It, this is still another psalm of David. He had more than one trouble. He had more than one danger. He had more than one day of weariness and trouble. He said, the proud are still risen against me. He said the assembly of violent men, wicked men, they have gathered against me and they have sought after my soul. Yet he had his trust in God because he said in verse 15, But thou, O Lord, art a God full of compassion and gracious, long-suffering, plenteous in mercy and truth. O turn unto me and have mercy upon me. Give thy strength unto thy servant and save the son of thine handmaid. He knew that the Lord will answer prayer. And even though he complained, even though he made his petition before the Lord, he said, I am making my petition because I trust in you. Because I believe in you. The same thing happened to the Lord Jesus Christ when he had his earthly ministry. People plotted against him. But please understand, the purpose of God will never be destroyed by the enemy. If you know that, you will have faith in God. If you know that, you will have confidence in God. You will not think that all the troubles around you will destroy you. They cannot. You will not think that all the troubles around you will swallow you up. They cannot and they will not. In Matthew chapter 12, from verse 14, Then the Pharisees went out, and held a counsel against him, how they might destroy him. But when Jesus knew it, he withdrew himself from thence, and great multitudes followed him, and he healed them all. Jesus will not deliberately expose himself to danger. He knew that the Father was always with him, and yet he did what the Lord wanted him to do. Whenever he needed to withdraw from the mob, from the conspirators, he withdrew so that he will not deliberately expose himself unto danger. Today, we know that Satan, principalities, and powers, with all the persecutors, are arrayed against every believer. These people, energized by the devil, instigated by the devil, they fight against the godly in different ways, using all means to oppress continually. And yet we know the word of God is a source of our courage. And faith 
is the answer to all the things we may feel, all the things that may come against us. By faith, we know we shall overcome. In Luke chapter 22, verse 31. And the Lord said, Simon, Simon, behold, Satan has desired to have you, that he may sift you as wheat. Satan wants to swallow up every believer. We we'll see that in the case of, of Simon. And yet remember, the day of Pentecost was waiting for Simon. Satan could not destroy that. And yet victory in ministry was waiting for Simon in the Acts of the Apostles. And Satan could not destroy that. Whatever is waiting for you of the plan of God, of the promise of God, of the power of God, Satan will never be able to destroy. He will try, but he will never overcome. And Jesus told Peter, Simon, Simon, behold, Satan has desired to have you, that he may sit you as wheat, but I have prayed for you. Jesus is praying for us. He's our shepherd. He's our savior. He's our great high priest. He's praying for us. And his prayer will be answered. Because the father always answers the son. His prayer for you, his prayer for me, will be answered in Jesus' name. We know the devil is fighting, but he will never overcome. In Ephesians chapter 6, Ephesians chapter 6, verse 12, For we wrestle not against flesh and blood. Here is where the Christian ought to be wise. We wrestle not against flesh and blood. Many times, brothers and sisters, we think the, the people that are fighting against us, we think they are flesh and blood. And we begin to fight them with carnal weapon, with human weapon. But human weapons will not be able to overcome principalities and powers. Paul the Apostle tells us our greatest enemies are not flesh and blood. Our greatest opposers are not flesh and blood. Our greatest opposition is not flesh and blood. It says, but we wrestle against principalities, against powers against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. But thank God, the weapon of our warfare is not carnal, but is mighty through God, able to pull down the strongholds, casting down imagination, casting down every high thing that exalted itself against the knowledge of God, bringing into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ. That's how we know we shall overcome. It doesn't matter what the enemy is trying to do, we shall overcome. It doesn't matter from what direction the enemy is coming, we shall overcome. In 1 Peter chapter 5, verse 8, Be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary the devil as a running lion, walketh about seeking whom he may devour, whom resist steadfast in the faith, Knowing that the same afflictions are accomplished in your brethren that are in the world. But the God of all grace, who has called us unto his eternal glory by Christ Jesus, after that ye have suffered a while, that means you may still have to bear that cross a little. That means you may still have to go through that wilderness journey a little. But never mind, the Lord is with you. And the Lord is going with you. And the everlasting arms are under you. He will make you perfect. Establish, strengthen, and he will settle you. And so we understand from the life of David that whatever the child of God is going through, at the end of the day, you will overcome. At the end of the battle, you will have a testimony to tell in Jesus' name. He had his cross to bear, but then he had confidence in God. That leads us to point two. Confidence in God. Psalm 56, from verse 3 and verse 4. He expressed his confidence in God. He said, what time I am afraid, I will trust in thee. In God, I will praise his word. In God, I will put my trust. I will not fear what flesh can do unto me. In verse 10, in God will I praise his word. In the Lord, I will praise his word. In God have I put my trust. I will not be afraid what man can do unto me. Here David expressed his confidence in God. His trust in God. Oh yes, we know. Momentarily he was afraid. Momentarily and suddenly fear greeted him. Fear came upon him. But he awoke. 
and he said, I will trust in the Lord. He has never failed, I will trust him. His promises are yet for me, I will trust him. His plan for my life has not been cancelled, I will trust him. He felt once again the anointing oil upon him. And he remembered the prophecy of Samuel concerning his life. And he decided, I will trust in the Lord. Remember the word of God, trust in the Lord. Remember the goodness and the grace of God, trust in the Lord. Remember the promises that he has given unto us and trust in him. Psalm 125, verse 1. They that trust in the Lord shall be as Mount Zion, which cannot be removed, but abideth forever. The enemies may wage war against Mount Zion, but Mount Zion will never be removed. The enemies may wage war against the believer, against the anointed one, but the enemies will never destroy the anointed one and the one who is the child of God in Jesus' name. They that trust in the Lord shall be as Mount Zion, which cannot be removed, but abideth forever. It may appear there is a battle raging on that territory, on that ground, on Mount Zion, but no matter the soldiers and the warriors of the enemy camp, Mount Zion will never be removed, and you will never be removed. In Proverbs chapter 29, verse 25, The fear of man bringeth a snare. Why are you fearing man? His breath is in his nostril. He will soon pass away. But the everlasting God, who is greater than all men, is by your side. The fear of man bringeth a snare. You shouldn't be afraid of man. You may respect man, reverence man, honor man, and be kind and gentle and charitable to men, but never be afraid of them. They cannot kill you. They cannot destroy you. Because the God who has saved you is greater than all men on the face of the earth. But it says, Whoso putteth his trust in the Lord shall be saved. Are you putting your trust in the Lord? You will be saved. You will be secured in Jesus' name. Only have the whole armor of God upon you. That you may be able to withstand in the evil day. In Ephesians chapter 6. From verse 11. Put on the whole armor of God that she may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. Put on the whole armor of God. God has provided every instrument, every armor by which you can have the victory. Put it on. But you know sometimes for us who are believers, whenever the enemy is coming, whenever the enemy plans are raging around us, Whenever the enemy is shooting his arrow in the daytime and at night, you know what we do generally? We grumble, we complain, we murmur. And yet, while we are murmuring and grumbling and complaining, we forget the armor. Let me counsel you. Even if you are going to ask God any question about your trouble, don't ask any question while the enemy is approaching. Keep on the armor upon you. Put on the armor upon you. While the enemy is raging, while the enemy is approaching, it's not the time to be asking questions. That is the time to put on the armor. That is the time to pray. That is the time to remember the promises of the Lord. Even if you are going to say, God, why me? Why at this time again? I just went through that predicament and that crossroad and the devil is coming again. Oh Lord, why? Don't ask any question at the moment. Put on the whole armor of God that ye may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. Verse 13, Wherefore, take unto you the whole armor of God. Can I tell you something? All that David had to fight with, you have today. The only thing is that you should take it, put it on. All that Samuel had to fight in the battle of the Lord spiritually, you have it today. The only thing you have to do, put it on. All that Elijah took, and he fought with, and he defeated the enemy you have today. In fact, everything that Paul had, everything that Peter had, with which he defeated the devil, you have today. I will tell you something that may surprise you. Everything that Jesus had in his earthly ministry, to fight the enemy you have even today. Because you see Jesus... He did not use his divinity, his deity, his supernatural power. All that he used is his, his faith in his heavenly father. He said, I know that my father is with me always. 
And then he said, I cast out evil spirit by the spirit of God. He said, I cast out all these demons by the finger of God. Everything he used is available to you today. Everything that Samuel used. Everything that David used. Everything that Elijah used. Everything that Peter or Paul used. Even everything that Jesus used in his earthly walk here on earth, you have today. When the enemy is approaching, take unto you the whole armor of God that you may be able to withstand in the evil day. And having done all to stand, thank God we shall stand. Stand, therefore, having your loins girt about with truth. And having on the breastplate of righteousness, your feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace above all above all whatever else you have consider this whatever else you have got consider this above all taking the shield of faith wherewith you shall be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked the darts may come from any direction you will overcome if you will have the shield of faith you will quench all the fiery darts of the wicked and take the helmet of salvation that means remember you are born again Remember you are a child of God and let your assurance of salvation cover your mind, cover your heart, cover your head so that the devil will not be able to throw any dart on your head and the sword of the spirit which is the word of God. That's what Jesus used in overcoming the devil. When the devil came from any direction, Jesus said it is written. He knew what was written concerning him. He knew the promises of God that were for him. Know the promises of God for you, you will overcome. Praying always with all prayer and supplication in the spirit. Watching thereunto with all perseverance and supplication for all saints. Thank God we know we can overcome. We're told in Isaiah chapter 26 verse 3. Isaiah 26 verse 3. Thou will keep him in perfect peace. Whose mind is stayed on thee, because he trusteth in thee. Trust in the Lord, he will keep you in perfect peace. Trust ye in the Lord forever, for in the Lord Jehovah is everlasting strength. In the Lord Jehovah is everlasting strength. For men, even though men were trying to entrap him and defeat him, he turned his face toward God, he put his trust in God. And see nothing can defeat a man who has faith in God. And if you are having faith in God tonight, nothing can defeat you. Nothing can destroy you. The psalmist did not allow the sudden fear or the settled fear to rule over his heart. He knew that by faith he will overcome and he overcame. Looking unto God with faith that cannot be denied, we shall always overcome because faith is the victory. Because of his faith in God, he called upon the Lord. He prayed unto the Lord. He cried unto the Lord. That brings us to point three. Crying to God. In Psalm 56, from verse 7. Shall they escape by iniquity? In thine anger, cast down the people, O God. Thou tellest my wanderings. Put down my tears into thy bottle. I did not in thy book. When I cry unto thee, then shall mine enemies turn back. This I know, for God is for me. So, verse 12. Thy vows are upon me, O God. I will render praises unto thee. For thou hast delivered my soul from death. Will not thou deliver my feet from falling? That I may walk before God in the light of the living. In verse 8. He said, O Lord, you can tell my wanderings. What did he mean? He was wandering about from cave to cave, from mountainside to mountainside, from the plain to the wilderness, running away from Saul, the king of Israel. He said, O oh Lord, I cannot stay in Jerusalem. I cannot stay in Zion. I cannot stay in the midst of the children of Israel. I am wandering about. I am wandering in the wilderness while I am trying to run away from Saul. O oh Lord, you know, you know the dangers around me. You know how I'm wandering about. You know I'm running away from Saul. Thou canst tell all my wanderings. Put down my tears into thy bottle. What did he mean? Every time he cried, every time he wept, every time he prayed, every time he made supplication, he said, O oh Lord, I know that my tears will never be forgotten. My tears will never be neglected. He said, I know what you are doing. You are putting my tears into the bottle. 
You know, sometimes when rain is falling, you put the, your bucket in the rain. And then the drops of water from the rain will be pouring into the bucket. When it gets to the stage or the level or the gauge that you want you to get to, then you take up the bucket and if you want to pour the water into a drum or pour it into flour or pour it somewhere, then you pour it when it is at the right gauge. And David said, I know what you are doing. You are putting all my tears into your bottle. When it is enough, when it gets to the gauge or to the level, then you will pour your blessings upon me. Remember the parable that Jesus told of the widow woman that went to the unjust judge and said, you must judge me, avenge me for my adversary. He went first, she went first, there was no answer. Went again, no answer. Went again, there was no answer. Until it reached the gauge. That is what we do when we pray. Maybe you cry, maybe you weep, because of the agony in your heart. Maybe there is no answer. The tears are being put in the bottle of the Lord. When it gets to the stage or the gauge or the level, the blessings will be poured out upon you. He said, Thou tellest my wanderings. Put thou my tears into thy bottle. Are they not in thy book? All your tears are in the record of God. They are reaching down. And at the appropriate time, your blessings will come in Jesus' name. He said, when I cry unto thee, then my enemy shall turn back. You call upon the Lord, his power will turn your enemy back. You cry unto the Lord, his power will turn your enemy away in Jesus' name. When I cry unto thee, thou shalt turn my enemies back. This I know, he said, I'm sure. This I know, because God is for me. Is God for you? Is God on your side? Then when you cry unto the Lord, all your enemies will be turned away. Know that for sure, because God will never forget the tears of his own people. In Psalm 57, from verse 1, Be merciful unto me, O God. Be merciful unto me, for my soul trusteth in thee. Yea, in the shadow of thy wings will I make my refuge until these calamities be overpassed. The calamities will not stay forever. The problems will not stay forever. All these calamities will pass over you eventually. I will cry unto God most high, unto God that performeth all things for me. He shall send from heaven and save me from the reproach of him that will swallow me up. God shall send forth his mercy and his truth. It tells us that God will definitely answer the prayers of his people in Psalm 6. Psalm 6, verse 6. I am weary with my groaning. All the night I make my bed to swim. I water my couch with my tears. You think you are the only one that has ever wet? David said, I wet my bed. I water my couch with my tears. But the Lord never forgot those tears. And the Lord will never forget your tears. Mine eye is consumed because of grief. It waxes old because of all mine enemies. Depart from me, all ye workers of iniquity. For the Lord has heard the voice of my weeping. Is a good God. Is a loving Father. He always hears the voice of the weeping of his own children. The Lord has heard my supplication. The Lord will receive my prayer. He will. Keep on praying. The answer will come. Even though you have been sorrowful, even though you have wept, and it appears that God has not seen it, he sees it. And all your tears are in his bottle. They will be converted into blessings, and blessings will be poured upon every one of us in the name of the Lord. In Psalm 61, from verse 1. Hear my cry, O God. Attend unto my prayer. From the end of the earth will I cry unto thee. When my heart is overwhelmed, lead me to the rock that is higher than I. He says, wherever I find myself, wherever the billows of life blow me, wherever the circumstances of life take me, even from the end of the earth, I will cry unto you. When my heart is overburdened, when my heart is overwhelmed, when the load is too heavy for me to bear, I know you will lead me to the rock that is higher than I. For thou hast been a shelter for me, and a strong tower 
for the enemy. I will abide in thy tabernacle forever. I will trust in the covert of thy wings. Keep on trusting in the Lord. Whenever there is any problem, pray. A prayer of petition. But don't only pray for yourself. Don't only stop at the prayer of petition. Go ahead and pray for other people. And weep for other people. And show your concern for other people. In a prayer of intercession. Lamentation chapter 2. Lamentation chapter 2 verse 18. Their heart cried unto the Lord. O wall of the daughter of Zion. Let the tears run down like a river. Day and night. Give thyself no rest. Let not the apple of thine eyes cease. Arise. Cry out in the night. In the beginning of the watches, pour out thine heart like water before the face of the Lord. Lift up thy hands toward him for the life of thy young children that faint for hunger in the top of every street. Here Jeremiah reminded the people that they should not only weep concerning their own problem. They should not only cry in prayer concerning their own problem. Concerning their spiritual problem, material problem, physical problem, they should remember the children on the street. They should remember the people on the street who are fainting for hunger because they do not have the bread of life to eat. And we too should remember the many people that are perishing because the bread of life has not been given to them. For many people that are thirsty because the water of life has not been given to them. Women that are perishing, children that are perishing, and the ladies that are perishing, and the teenagers that are perishing, the poor people in the slum areas that are perishing, that we need to reach out to and pray for them and lift them up before the Lord, that the Lord will not allow them to die in sin, to die in their difficulties and in the dangers surrounding them, that we will pray for them and after praying for them, we become concerned for them. We reach out to them in love, evangelizing them. We reach out to them in love, meeting their spiritual needs. We reach out to them in love, bringing them to the source and the fountain of all blessing, to the foot of the cross, so that all their needs will be met. If you will pray like that for others, if you will be concerned like that for others, if you will pray the prayer of intercession more than you have done before, your own prayer of petition will be answered speedily in Jesus' name. Let's come back to Psalm 56. And try to see the feeling of the heart of this man. And the trust and the confidence that he had. Psalm 56 from verse 1. Be merciful unto me, O God, for man will swallow me up. He, he fighting daily oppresses me. When your troubles increase, let your prayer time increase. When your difficulties increase, let your prayer time increase. When all the dangers around you are escalating, spend more time to pray and go in the presence of the Lord and ask for the mercy of the Lord. When you do not find mercy from human beings, when you do not find some provision from human beings, when people are denying you of your right and they are after your life, make it a time to draw close unto God and cry to the Lord. Let your tears be known unto God when your parents forsake you, when your neighbors forsake you, when your managers forsake you, when they are denying you of your right. Go to the Lord and say, Lord, be merciful unto me because men want to swallow me up. In verse 3, what time I am afraid, I will trust in thee, trust in the Lord when human beings are failing you. When you cannot have confidence in human beings. When human beings are disappointing you. Remember the promises of God. Remember the plan of God. Remember the power of God will never fail. When, whenever you are becoming afraid in the night, in the day, on the street, in your, own, in your own room, anywhere you may be. Whenever sudden fear is coming upon you, begin to trust in the Lord. Because in verse 8, thou tellest my wanderings. Thou puttest down, put down my tears into thy bottle are they not in thy book every time you pray remember your tears are known to god your weeping is known to god your concern the burden of your heart is known to god when i cry unto thee then shall my enemies turn back this i know for god is for me when you know god is for you why don't you call upon the lord when you know God is on your side, why didn't you call upon the Lord? When the enemies are rushing at you and running after you, why don't you call upon the Lord? And he will turn the enemies away from you. He will do it in Jesus' name. When your heart is being overwhelmed and being overburdened, call upon the Lord. He will never overlook your tears. 
It will never overlook your petition. And while you are praying for yourself, remember other people who are perishing. Remember other people who are suffering. Cry unto the Lord. God is for you. His promises are for you. His power is for you. His provision is available for you. Call upon the Lord. Your tears are going to his bottle. Who knows those tears may fill the bottle today. Who knows those tears may get to the gauge today. And once they get to that gauge, the blessings of heaven, the blessings of God may will fall upon you. Let us rise up and call upon the Lord. We have no other deliverer. We have no other savior. We have no other supporter. We have no other sympathizer. We have no other helper. We have no other provider. He is our God. Let us call upon him. There's no other place to go. There's no other person to run to. He is our God. Call upon the Lord your God. He will deliver. There's no other savior. He is our savior. There is no other helper. He is our helper. There is no other provider. He is our provider. We have no other father. He is our father. We have no other support. He is our support. We have no other guide. He is our guide. We have no other deliverer. He is our deliverer. Cry unto the Lord. Call upon the Lord. He will help you. He sees all those tears. He sees all those problems. He knows what you are going through. He knows the danger on the way. He knows the need of your life. He knows the spiritual problem. He is our Father. He is the one who will help us. Call upon the Lord your God. They that pray will never be ashamed. They that trust in the Lord will never be defeated. He is our own. When my mother and my father forsake me, the Lord will take me up. When the enemies are running around to swallow me up, the Lord will be merciful unto me. Thou tellest all my wanderings. Put my tears into thy bottle. Are they not written in thy book? Call upon the Lord your God. He will never forsake you. He will never forsake you. The youngest child of God is important in the hand of God. The weakest saint of God is important in the sight of God. Are you troubled? Are you distressed? Are you persecuted? Are you overwhelmed and overburdened by calamities of life? He will deliver you. He will deliver you. All these calamities will soon pass over you. He will never forget his own. He will never forsake his own. Trust in the Lord.